When you think of Korea, you might picture dazzling cities, innovative technology, and high-speed internet. But behind these scenes, railways have shaped the Korean peninsula's journey for over a century. From colonial steam locomotives to next-generation maglevs, Korea's rail evolution is a fascinating story of ambition, division, and progress. Welcome to Search Pulse. Let's travel back in time to see how the railways of North and South Korea transformed across decades of innovation. It all began in 1899 when the very first railway line, the Jinjeon Line, opened between Noryangjin and Incheon. In 1906, the Jungbu Line was completed linking Seoul to Busan and forming the backbone of Korea's rail transport. Early locomotives were mainly steam-powered tender engines imported from Japan. Among them, the Mogai class 460 used for passenger trains and the Mikai class 282 designed for heavy freight. These engines were fueled by coal using fire tube boilers and manual firing, requiring teams of firemen and engineers. By the 1930, the system has expanded rapidly, with lines reaching almost every corner of peninsula. After Japan's defeat in World War II, Korea was liberated and divided. The 38 parallels split the railway system into two separate networks. In the south, the Korean National Railroad, or KNR for short, was created in 1946 with headquarters in Yanyon, which later branded as Korail in 2019. In the north, the Korean State Railway took over operations in 1946, same time as Korean National Railroad, with its headquarters at Pyongyang. The Korean War, which happened between 1950 and 1953, devastated rail infrastructure. Nearly 50% of passenger cars and 55% of electrical grid were destroyed. Bridges, stations, and rolling stock were impacted in air raids. But out of this destruction came two divergent paths in locomotive technology, with North Korea taking the path of rail electrification and South Korea relying on steam engine strain based out of coal technology. North Korea focused early on electrification to reduce dependence on imported oil and coal. By the 1960s, major trunk lines were converted to 3000 volt DC overhead catenary. Some of the most important locomotive developments are like the introduction of Red Flag 1 class electric locomotives in the 1960s, which was based on the Chinese SS3 and Soviet VL60. Those locomotives had Bobo wheel arrangement and were used for both freight and passenger. The traction motors were capable of delivering 2000 kW total output. Then the Red Flag 6 class was introduced in 1981. It was an articulated twin section locomotive with Coco wheel configuration designed to haul extremely heavy freight over mountain grades. The locomotive weighed over 180 tons. Next was diesel K62 class, which was the imported Soviet M62 locomotive built by Lugansk Locomotive Works. It was a diesel electric locomotive powered with a 14D40 engine. It had a total output of 1470 kilowatt. These locomotives were notable for their rugged construction, simple DC traction system, and manual controls. Today, about 5,200 kilometers of track remains in the service in North Korea, with around 60% electrified, though the network struggles with power shortages and maintenance issues. South Korea, although started with the steam locomotives, but rapidly transitioned to diesel after the Korean War and subsequently into electric locomotives. Today, Hyundai Rotem is one of the world's biggest locomotive manufacturer. The major technical change were the introduction of steam locomotives connecting Seoul to Busan in 1955. 
This steam locomotives was the China Railways JF1 class steam locomotives for the freight trains operated by the China Railway. They were originally built in United States, Japan, and Manchukuo between 1918 and 1945 for the South Manchuria Railway, the Manchukuo National Railway, the North China Transportation Company, and the Central China Railway. Following the Korean War armistice in 1953, the United States Army provided China Railway's JF-1 class steam locomotives to South Korea. In 1967, South Korean railways began the dieselization of railways and the steam locomotives were thus eliminated. The steam locomotive official retirement ceremony was held at Seoul Station on August 31, 1967. The train which had operated for 68 years was replaced with a diesel version which ran as an extra train before it was completely retired. Diesel locomotive was introduced with GM EMD locomotives such as the GT26CW-2 locally known as the 7300 series which had a power output of around 2460 kilowatt were used for both passenger and freight services. The diesel electric locomotive was introduced in 1979. With the completion of 10.7 km long section of electric railroad between Jusan and Gohan was celebrated with a trial run on June 9, 1972, signaling the era of electric railways. This enabled faster and more efficient intercity trains. In the 1990s, electric locomotives were gradually introduced to Chunbuk Line, Gyeongbu Line, and Hoanam Line. Samol Ho Express trains was introduced in 1974, which had air-conditioned passenger cars with top speed around 140 km per hour. In the 2004, the KTX high-speed rail was launched, which was based on French TGV technology. The system used 25 kb AC for electrification. The maximum operating speed of the train was 305 km per hour. The locomotive used synchronous motors and regenerative braking. KTX Shangkyong was introduced in 2010, was the first domestically developed high-speed train. It enhanced crash safety and more efficient traction system. These advancements transformed South Korea into one of the world's leader in this high-speed rail technology. South Korea did not stop at conventional rails. In 2016, it launched a domestically developed urban maglev line in Incheon. The locomotive was designed by Hyundai Rotem. Incheon Airport maglev line connecting Incheon International Airport to the Yonggyu area is a 6.1 km in length with an average speed of 30 km per hour. But it has a cruising speed of 80 km per hour with the maximum speed it can attain is 110 km per hour. Being electromagnetic levitation means the entire train has no wheels or friction. The levitation happens through electromagnets and the propulsion happens using linear induction motors. Two more stages were planned of 9.7 km and 37.4 km, forming a loop of Yongyang Island, but presently they are on hold. This prototype system was designed for automated operation without onboard drivers, making it one of the world's first fully driverless urban maglevs. Though modest in scale, it represents South Korea's ambition to pioneer next generation transport. Some railway lines still cross the demilitarized zone on paper. In the 2007, the Gyeonggyu line briefly reopened for symbolic freight and passenger trains linking north and south. Though service remains suspended due to tensions, many hope these tracks could one day reconnect the peninsula economically and culturally. In just over 125 years, Korea's railway have evolved from coal-fired steam locomotives to driverless maglev trains. North Korea's network remains heavily electrified but reliant on older Soviet-style designs, while South Korea has surged ahead 
with some of the world's fastest and most advanced rail system. What will be the next chapter hold? A unified network hyperspeed maglevs or something we haven't even imagined? Only time and the rails will tell. This video is a quick sweep into the railway system in Korean Peninsula. A much detailed video can be made in future on the same. Don't forget to watch other informative videos from this channel like the evolution of electric locomotive, the unraveling of traction induction motor in Vande Bharat and speed control technology. If you have enjoyed this journey through Korean railway history, please click on the like button, give your valuable comments and for more such stories about train, technology and transportation around the world, don't forget to subscribe since as many as 90% of our viewers are not subscribed. So please subscribe. Thanks for watching.